I wonder what the title of the message is. Might turn it on, it might work. <laughs> Glory to God. Fan or follower? Imagine that. Fan or follower? <laughs> I told the folks at Bible study and the ones that were here Friday in Bible study that just going to get beat on and beat on and beat on when it comes to this. Amen. How many of y'all know of someone that owns a professional lemonade stand? Anybody? You do? One out of this whole crowd. But how many of y'all know or did that yourself want to do this? As a kid. As a kid? Yeah. Ethan's asked me. I've done everything I could to discourage him. But if there's professional lemonade stands, and that means somewhere along the line, a child whose father helped them build a stand and sell lemonade for 25 cents. See, somebody bought at least four glasses at a time. I mean, there's a dollar. Maybe he had change. He must have sold a bunch of them to have change, right? Math's needed. You've got to have good math to have a lemonade stand. You don't want to give them too much change back. That'd be messed up, wouldn't it? But the thing is, is that means a child had this lemonade stand selling lemonade for 25 cents from maybe a cardboard box or a piece of scrap wood that was put up and hand painted. And evidently this homemade lemonade was so good that he did even better at 25 cents and got invited to some type of community event, whether it was a middle school football game or a, a boozar or something. But this child started selling for a dollar a cup or even two dollars or at a biker event, five dollars a cup, you know. <laughs> Six dollars for uh, it's fresh squeezed real lemonade. You get to watch them doing it right there. See the lemons and all that, you know. So it's the real deal. But evidently, this kid got grandma or great grandma's recipe, and it was so good that he's he's getting called out so much to do this that he's reached a point in his life that he's got to make a decision. See, he started out; it was neat. It was like a hobby. It was fun. It was just on the weekends. But see, now he's reached a point where he's got to have a spreadsheet to figure out how much he's spending on just sugar and how much he's spending on lemon. And he's got to find a place to... He can't go to H-E-B anymore because they don't have enough lemons. He has to go to H-E-B and order them ahead of time and get a case of lemons. He's having to do all this during the time that he's not selling. And he's reached a point that he's being asked to be at so many places so often he's wondering. He's reached a point, is this fun anymore? Is this a hobby or has it become a career? I was having fun, but now man, I'm either going to have to become fully committed to this thing and call it a career or back off a little bit. Y'all getting this, right? Some of y'all already go, man, I know where he's going now. <clears throat> and this, this is just not in the business world. You see? Now, some of y'all are probably thinking, man, I need to start eliminating Stan. <laughs> he's making that kind of... And some of y'all are thinking... I don't, my son don't know how to spreadsheets. Maybe my son needs to do it for doing spreadsheets to figure out his expenses. Whatever you're thinking right now, whatever it is that you're thinking, whether it's to start one or whatever, these kind of moments in our lives is not unique to the business world. We have to make a decision and decide where we're at and where we're going to go from here. Are we going to continue to have just back off and just have fun on the weekends or are we going to become more committed and we have to do this. <laughs> we have to do this by defining DTR. Some of you will recognize what those letters stand for. If you're not sure, let me help you out. If you are a young man in a relationship with a young woman, then uh, chances are these letters are enough to strike fear into your heart. You may run away from, postpone, you may dread the DTR talk. Some young men will even terminate a relationship if they feel like the DTR talk is imminent. It is that official talk that takes place in every romantic relationship. Do you know what it stands for, DTR? Define the relationship. You sit down and you decide where things are going. Have things moved from casual to committed? I remember this uh, date I went on in high school. On the very first date, the girl tried to have the DTR talk with me. First date, DTR. I got out of there PDQ. 
I just ran away. <laughs> Sometimes, and I think it needs to preach more often, you know, that we need to define our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And some of y'all feeling like I need to leave. I need to get out of here PDQ. <laughs> Amen. There's some of us that might be like that, but I think uh, most of us, if not all of us, are ready for this. That we really need to sit down and reevaluate our relationship and define our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Over the next few weeks, I, I want all of us to examine our relationships with Jesus Christ. Each and every one of us on an individual basis, I get hit a lot by getting it prepared of where I stand. As I shared with the class prior to this, that I'm not a committed follower like I need to be. I'm a follower, but not 100%. There's some things that need to change in my life. I think most of us in this room need to have that DTR talk. Amen? We need to have that. To find that relationship that we have with Jesus. And to look at Christ's invitation to us. We're going to use a verse today that you probably don't have on your refrigerator. But Jesus told us in Luke 9, 23, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself. Take up the cross daily and follow me. Amen. And I think many of you, as I said, welcome this DTR talk because you're ready to move up to a different level. But you've got to have somebody to help you. And that's why God had me do this series again. This different level of commitment in our lives. All of us can go up another level of commitment in our lives. You're ready to move past the casual and move into the more committed. You may have not known it, but God's going to move you into that. More committed. So you're ready for this talk. Some of you are not, maybe, because you kind of like the setup you got right now. You know who you are. I don't. But you like the setup you got with Jesus. I mean, He's a nice guy. And you like church. He, it gives you something to do on the weekend and some people to see. You even look forward to some of the folks you're seeing today. There's nothing wrong with that. You kind of like what you, you got going on here. It's, isn't it nice to be able to sip coffee or drink uh, soda while you're, you're in? At, I mean, this is nice. You know, it's comfortable to drink some water. And, you know, there's other places you can't do this. So this is a nice and comfortable church. Well, it was till you started preaching this. Amen. But it gets a little uncomfortable, right? <laughs> Change the subject. And maybe you even get into the fight and flight. Maybe there is somebody in here and you need to, you need to pray about that. You're going to get out of here PDQ. You're not coming back for the next five weeks because you know Pastor Mine is going to be just be stepping on them toes, man. That's the Holy Spirit, not me. It don't matter who's up here. Amen. The Holy Spirit. What we want to do over these next few weeks is define our relationship with Jesus Christ. And here's how I'd like to ask this question. Are you a fan or are you a follower? And when you realize what a fan is, an enthusiastic admirer, I mean, most of us in here like sports. And we're fans of some sport team. Or maybe you're a fan of some racing team. Maybe you, but I mean, there's, some of us put, you don't want to come to my sitting room and watch TV because there's nothing but Colts from wall to wall. <laughs> and the only reason we don't have Colts chairs is because we can't afford them. <laughs> she picked them out one time. I was like, whoa, forget, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> so we're all fans of something. But we're just admirers. Are you getting this? We're just enthusiastic admirers. And sitting in the benches, some of us are coaching from the bench, saying we could do better than the coach that's down there. But it's the folks that are on the field that are actually participating, and they're committed. They're making sacrifices. While you're up there with me, in the stands, eating popcorn and hot dogs and then greasy cheeseburger. And then, oh, for a snack, get, get something really healthy. Some nacho cheese and with jalapenos. Oh, grab some Tums on the way home. The guy on the field all week long didn't eat what he really likes because he made a sacrifice to eat what he needs. See, being fully committed, you make sacrifices. You participate in. You getting that? There's a lot of us that, and like Kyle said... The, the, the pastor that came up with this series, thank God, is, is that there's a lot of churches full of a lot of fans. And you come and you're enthusiastic just about what's going on here. You probably, you critique uh, what 
what I'm saying. And give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, right? To decide whether you're going to come back. And if you really like it, you're definitely coming back. And if you got a thumbs down, you're looking at your significant other and go, should we go back and listen to this guy again? That's what a fan does. Because a follower came in here committed, and regardless of what's being said, is listening to the Holy Spirit Amen. on your heart. Glory to God. And Christ, He tells them that they must take up the cross daily, make that sacrifice to follow Him. We can feel pretty good about ourselves because we're great admirers of Christ and some of us can leave on fire. It, I mean, really on fire about what happened in here. But yet it's only because we, we know Him. We don't know Him. We just know of Him. We don't know Him as a personal, I mean, that intimate personal relationship that we should have. There's three questions that's going to help you today. There's only three questions. And the first one is, why are you here? Why are you here? This is important. It sounds so simple. Some of us are even saying because I want to be, but no, hold on now. A young lady, she even shared during Bible study, she started coming here because her husband-to-be. She came because of him. That's very common. Some of y'all, that's probably hurting because you're like, ouch. Oops. You come here because your spouse or your significant other comes here. You come here because your parents come here. You come here because your parents come here. <laughs> Children don't have a choice. But at some point in your life, you got to be here because you want to be here. Amen? Amen? That's when you know. When you can answer this, why are you here? Because you want to be here? See, if you read through the Gospels, Jesus at different points in His ministry, He would draw a line in the sand to separate the fans from the followers. One such instance is in John chapter 6. Write that down. Read that today. It's only like 66 verses. It's not bad. It's not that bad at all. Most of you will read that much on Facebook if somebody else is driving before you get home. One such instance in John chapter 6. Jesus is at the height of His ministry. He's feeding thousands of people with a few loaves of uh, bread and fish. And, and people are coming because of all the miracles. They're following Him, right? They're following Him. Right. But if you look at verse 2, it says, because of the miracles. Jesus says they're coming because of the miracles. They're coming because of the show. Why are you here? Is it because of the nice coffee that Randall made or Thad made? Is it because of the donuts that Tramp made or brought? Is it because somebody else is here? Why are you here? Answer that honestly with yourself. God's He's spanking all of us because some of us are like, wow, did you come here because you have that relationship and you just had to be here for Him, with Him, in the presence of other like-minded believers? So why are you here? What is your because? Okay? And in verse 66, when He placed that out there, He said, no, He's not saying, come and get some more free. Food. We're going to have a potluck. Yeah, drink your coffee in the pews. No, what he said was, you have me. me. Amen. And when he said, you have me, just me, it says many left him. From this time, many. That Greek word means multitude. That's a lot of people. That's a sad, sad verse. Many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. A lot of them went home because Jesus said, let's define this relationship that we have. What He offered wasn't what they wanted. Glory to God. The second question. I beat that one hard enough. Y'all got that one? The second question is, are you all in? Are you all in? See, being a follower of Jesus requires complete commitment. We talked about this. All of us compartmentalized. Some of us even shared some things. Uh, it was pretty open at Bible study. Shared some things about what compartments we didn't let God into. A lot of men 
that work and make money and a lot of women that have a career and make money don't let God in their billfold or pocketbook. Huh? Ouch. God, I will follow you, but leave my money alone. You want 10% of my money? And God says, no, I only want 10% back. Ouch. Some of us say, God, you can stay anywhere in my house except my kitchen and my bedroom. I like this, I'm eating this. I like that, and I'm going to do that. Hello. Come on now. We're all adults in here, right? Children need to know the truth too. Wait too long, you'll be sorry you didn't. <laughs> Glory to God. So we compartmentalize where we're going to let God in. My son, my youngest, well, he used to be my youngest anyway, his daddy, <laughs> he came home from work one day. And he looked broken down. And this is a hard work. All my kids are hard workers. Aren't they sad? <laughs> they are. They're, I'm, and they're working. And he come home and he just looked all beat down. I said, what's wrong, son? He goes, you're not. He was working for a preacher. Preacher said some things that he didn't expect to be said by his dad, let alone the preacher. Now, he'd heard his dad say this. This is before daddy was walking with the Lord. This Back in back but BC for me, amen. <laughs> Before Christ was really in my life. Anyway, this preacher had said some really vulgar words. Mad. And Matthew said, he looked at him, he said, I can't believe you say, Hey, what stays what happens at work stays at work. This is work. Remember that? Devastated him. He's like, whoa, he had that preacher up on a pedestal. But hey, that pastor was totally wrong. Some of us do that. What happens at work stays at work. What happens at school stays at school. What happens on the deer lease stays at the deer lease. I knew some people like that. Go to church religiously. Go to church. That's the key word, religiously. Checking that Wednesday night and checking that Sunday morning off, checking that Sunday night off. But when they went to the deer lease, what happens at the deer what, ha what happens at the, at the deer lease stays at the deer lease. Amen? Come on now. Somebody need to see and hear that. <laughs> I'm a Christian, but I'm not all in. Then you're not a follower. You're a fan. Can't I can't candy coat that. Jesus didn't care about stuff. He was the rock of offense, man. He's the cornerstone of our life, but he's the rock of offense. He's gonna let you know. He's letting you know today. There's some things in our life. That we're only fans and we need to change. Amen? Amen. It's, not, it's not possible to compartmentalize Christianity in this little box we call religion and tr be a true follower. There's no bar bargaining. There's no bartering. There's no, there's no uh, uh, negotiating with Jesus on His relationship. Amen. We act like we're in charge. Well, this is how we're going to do it. It's not how it works. Amen. He told us. I don't think anybody here likes the word sacrifice. And most of us don't like the word fully committed. <laughs> Two words. They go hand in hand. Now Kyle shared during Bible study that when you get married you say better or worse. Richer or poor, right? In sickness and in health. And those are great words when you're standing up here. But to know if you're fully committed is when poor turns into <laughs> losing your home. Then you can find out if you're really committed to one another. Sickness, when you end up in a wheelchair, that's when you find out. Pat and Roseanne, the epitome of true, committed husband and wife. That's when you know if you're committed. Better or worse, when worse turns into infidelity. Wow. Our actions show whether we're committed. The last question. Short sermon, so powerful. Wow. It's good it's short. You're killing me, Pastor. Have you made it your own? Have you made it your own? I was talking down to somebody. He's 11 years old. I know he looks like he's 15 as tall as he is. He's only 11. But we're almost at that point. 
He's here because he has to be here. There's some adults in here that are here because they just feel like they have to be here for someone else. Hello. You already knew the answer to this. If, however, you answered the first two. Why are you here? Because. What was your because? And then, are you all in? And the way you answer this tells you straight up if you've made it your own. When I... Uh, how many of y'all ever had to carpool to work or carpool somewhere and the person that owns the car is playing something you don't like? All the time. All the time. Listen. 45 minute, 30 minute to work back every day and the same individual is playing something that you don't like. I promise you this is going to happen to you. You're going to become a fan of whatever's on that radio whether you like it or not. At first, you may be just like this and just ignore it. You know you can't say nothing. And they know you're a believer, but they're playing something that don't have any words that has anything to do with God. And you don't want to say nothing because that's your ride back and forth to work. And in a few days, you find yourself going like this. And you don't even know why. Come on now. And then you start humming to words you still don't know because you don't like it. But you don't know, but you've become a fan of somebody you hated before. That's what a fan is. Sometimes... Because we're in a situation to where you're going to church for the wrong reason and you haven't become fully committed, you can't make it your own. But when somebody else looks at you, they think you are. And you appear to be the same. You only know inside if you're all in. Amen. You know. Because I can look out here when I turn around and I can see people standing up and raising their hands and singing. But you might be doing that because you've been doing that. You might have been doing that since you were a little bitty. Come on, somebody need to hear that. Amen. You're going through the motions and you're doing everything you've always done, but you haven't become that committed follower that Jesus Christ wants you to be. And, I, and I've personally known people that were more righteous than I've ever been inside the church, inside the sanctuary, and I thought, man, someday I'm going to be like that. I'm too embarrassed to put my hands up. I certainly ain't going to dance like that. And then before they get out of the parking lot, listen to them to screaming at their kids. <laughs> but by appearance, by all appearance, was 100% sold out for Jesus as far as I knew till I, saw, I, till I seen that. Amen? Many of us are going to church because of a parent or a mom or a dad or a brother or sister, girlfriend, boyfriend, spouse, whatever you came to appease them. And for those of us that grew up in the church, and you, you, you just don't know anything else. And so you're just... I can say page 139 and some of these folks will know what it is. Some of you all do. You're nodding your head. You already know what verse. You already. You don't even have to open the book because you can sing it. You know the verse. You know. The, you know all the um, words to it. The and, and and then and then you say Luke nine twenty three, and some of y'all that went to Master Life through us. That was the very first scripture we memorized. So a lot of you all probably knew that. And so that makes you enthusiastic admirers and fans of Jesus Christ because you know the scriptures, you know the words, you like the music, but are you all in? Are, it, did you come here and become fully committed for Jesus Christ? Or are you just going through the motions because you, you had to memorize 923 for Master Life? We've sang this song so many times and you've been here enough that you just know what page 139 is. Somebody, somebody... We all need to hear this, not just somebody. Somebody. Everybody needs to hear this. It's easy to become a fan, folks. And I think with just this short, this short sermon, you've realized where you stand. There's nobody in here that doesn't realize where they stand. We come to appease someone else and pretty soon we get into the flow of things. And we look just like everybody else. We act just like everybody else. If your faith isn't your own, if you're not pursuing a relationship with Jesus Christ yourself, and you keep coming week after week after week to create a faith that was someone else's in the first place, you're just numbing yourself to the real thing. 
we all reach a point where it's got to be ours. Not who we came to be with. Not who we came because of. Amen? Are you all in? You have to make your faith your own. Jesus Christ isn't looking for a relationship between you and your mom. Jesus Christ is not looking for a relationship between you and your dad. Jesus Christ is not looking for a relationship with you and your spouse or your significant other or your spiritual brother or your spiritual sister. Jesus Christ is looking for a relationship with you and you only. So in closing, one last question. Actually, Luke 14, 26. I've got to share this. Jesus said this. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. See, this is not about your mom or dad. It's not about your brothers and sisters. It's not about your spouse. It's about you and Jesus. Amen. And the last question in closing, again, you've got to ask yourself as you leave today, are you a follower of Jesus or are you just an enthusiastic fan? And I know where we all, what we should be saying after being spanked so hard. So then follow that up with, can I become a better follower for Jesus Christ? Let's pray. Father God, I thank You for a short and powerful message. I thank You for this series. Again, I thank You for the vision for it to even exist. And Lord, I pray that we all, we all came expecting, we've all received this Word that You have this morning for us. And that we do leave change for Your glory. And that we all strive for this next week before we come back to be better followers. More of a follower and less of a fan. It's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's stand to be dismissed. And